Our heroes head down to the fields of Menorahs in a special adventure that's sure not to bore us. You. This week on D&D Minus. Right, so we're not doing talking D's anymore. I'm Achum the Cat. I wear many hats. And last week on D&D Minus, we escaped the land of Dis, went straight into a dark room that ended up being Tony D's house of gainage, sweet, sweet gains. And I came away with a wand of no fuck you. Our friends over here, the the dog came away with the cloak of many pockets. Fucking basic, if you ask me. Our our emo loot player, our emo bard, came away with the poxes, boxes, of foxes and the soxes, would not, could not in a in a anyway, it's a box. I don't know. It's got something to do with healing, I guess. I haven't needed much of that, if you know what I mean. So maybe the others will use it. And last but not least, we have our Baos, Vardos the Chase, he got three plus three longsword of slaps your dad, a sword that can slap your dad. Yeah, and so then we're on to the next, I guess. Mm, That's it. I wear many hats. I curse you. You're all cursed. Great. Excellent. The Eli doing the gam interstitials (laughs) at the pajama party school (laughs) of D&D summaries. You open your eyes and find yourselves not in a boat like you were on the first two levels of hell, but on five connected inner tubes. Wait, is Carl here? Yeah, because there's five of them and one of them has Carl on it. Wait, are they like, it's like Olympic rings connected or are they just tied together? They're just tied together. <laughs> okay. Well, they're sort of lazy ring style, yeah. We're just holding hands. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Like, yeah. One beer hand, one connect hand. Yeah. <laughs> Achum, yours has a center, so you are dry and comfortable. Oh, thank God. Wait a minute. Hold on a second, Morgan. That wouldn't work. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. That just I, doesn't I even logistically work. It's go, not. It's but, yeah. not it, all right. Wait. So, <laughs> we could all have our hands. We could all have our one hand connected in the middle and our beer okay, hand off right, the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah it right, holding right. hands yeah. in a circle. It's fine. Yeah, I was thinking just in a line. Like no, you can't do that because you wouldn't have a beer hand. Unless, unless the hand holding was holding an ankle. One guy Ooh, ends yeah. up with one eye. All the eyeballs are poked out <laughs> otherwise. It doesn't work. <laughs> now you hold on to the other's inner tubes. Sure. You sure. dig us I mean, we're all drunk, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But everyone else, you find yourself gently floating along a lazy river at a speed that's just slow enough to be delightful, but fast enough that you don't feel the need to paddle. Carl's inner tube is at the front, and he says... Oh, yeah, baby, that's the spot. Welcome, my friends, to Menoris. Oh, and uh, watch your butts or they'll dissolve. Right, because it's, yeah, the thing, the bad river. So look, I'm guessing you guys are going to want to talk to the head of the layer again, and I got you covered, okay? He's in the center of the forest, and his name is Mamoon. I love what he's done with falafel. The good news is the river is going to take us right to the edge of the entrance to the forest. So we got a little chill time while we just kind of float down there. And since we have said chill time, I got to admit the four of you have got me curious. So if you don't mind me asking, what's your plan here? Do you guys have a plan? Like, are we trying to do something? Yeah, that was my question. Like, let's say you get all the way down to the ninth level of hell, like, what are you even going to ask Asmodeus for anyways? Like, what do, you, what do you guys want? This is a great question. Ooh. I would like... Thank you, Morgan, the sound editor for Puzzle <laughs> of Thunderstorm LLC. I would like... Mm, I would like to climb fences, run around in bushes. So you'd like to be alive again. Do they have seedless watermelons in, <laughs> um, in, in this fantasy world? 
Oh yeah, they do. Okay, well that's then then no, that's that's covered. Um, so that's our idea, right? Is we're trying to like be alive again. I would like to explore some more dimensions. All right. This has been fascinating to me. Can I ask you guys a question? Did someone tell you that Asmodeus grants wishes <laughs> if you reach him? It seems like your question was sort of implying a little bit of that. You like we would go oh. down there. You said he's in the ninth level. We're going down there. Like, what are you going to ask him for? Well, you said down. I wanted to know what you were going to. I mean, you're going down. He's down there. What can, do you want? Can he grant wishes? He, I mean, he probably can he, grant he wishes. Can, right? I, okay. But I cannot emphasize enough. He is not known for granting wishes. This is not the kind of guy you go to for wishes. This is the guy you go away from for wishes. Well, actually, we were in the middle of a job when we got here. So I feel like that might have something to do with it. Like, we, we should probably finish that job, go back to the human realm or whatever the fuck it's called and finish that job. We need, like, a guy named Blade to, like, tell us what to do. I got to be honest, like, I'm really nervous if Eli doesn't know what we're doing. We may have just been going <laughs> in the wrong direction. I don't know what the fuck we're doing. We're just going, I'm, I'm going left. with Wesley you know? Snipes or Blade Vigil. Yeah, this campaign was actually supposed to take place in heaven, and you guys have just been, <laughs> I've been faking it through. I'm this is pouring the good place. <laughs> buckets of sweat, yeah, the whole time. Wait a second, this is, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but, like, all right, you guys want to go back to Earth, or at least some of you do. There was a mention of seedless watermelon. We could put a bit in that. But like, I mean, <laughs> Damien clearly wants to stay here. This is Damien's heaven. So. Sure, sure. Morgan, Morgan, the sound editor, makes a good point. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wants to, like, meet Asmodeus and, like, stay in the deepest level of hell, because that would theoretically be... Maybe he wants to flirt. He wants to yeah, that would be, up. like, the best hell, right? The bottom level. Sure. Can I ask you a question? Like, <laughs> what if you guys get down there and he says no to your, I'm going to say this, batshit variety of wishes? Sure. <laughs> it's like, it's like we're, worst case scenario, we're like in hell still, right? Like that's where mm -hmm. we're there. We're here. We just got to walk back up mm. through all the levels. Yeah. I wonder if I could banish myself to a different dimension. You're going to banish yourself to a different dimension. Okay, I have so banishment now. Here's the good news, right? Mm. I'm, I know that Asmodeus can travel between the dimensions. So helpful. He could probably teleport you guys through the dimensions. Sure. I don't know if he could teleport you home. No, I, I feel as though since we've seen him already, right? He seems to know what's going on yeah. in hell all the time. So I feel like he probably knows what we're doing already, right? Is he watching us right now? He's heard of us. I think he's leading us down there. I think he wants as, to come. As Eli mentioned, the sound editor, I get to listen to everything twice. <laughs> Somebody gave the last guy the dollar. He was tipped the dollar <gasps> Ooh. like at random. And he was like, what is this? Like, that's crazy that a random character got the one item we needed as a tip. So I have a feeling, I have a feeling that Asmodeus is leading us downwards to meet with him. You don't think we genuinely won all those games? <laughs> I thought we genuinely won those games. But guys, you know that Asmodeus isn't like, isn't like a good guy, right? So like if he's bringing you down there for a reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're in hell. Technically, you're not a good guy either. I, uh, just because someone's from a place doesn't mean that it necessarily reflects on the uh, part of their character. I mean, I, hell, that I, does. I welcome this part of my character. Carl, why are you in hell, by the way? Yeah. I was, I'm just a creature. I just am born on this dimension. I just, I didn't do nothing bad. Devils exist down here. You sound awfully defensive. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Devils are just good people who were born in hell? That's what it, you're saying? Well, no, we are, there. we are like otherworldly beings, kind of like aliens. I mm. think aliens is a better way to think of it. Not sure why I would use that as a reference in this setting, but I think it's uh, apropos in case Morgan, the sound editor is listening. <laughs> and like, hell is the planet we live on. Damien, do you have a theremin in there somewhere? You got a theremin, then? You got a theremin? I do not. I have like just bangy stuff. Oh, Look, the cat has I... all the hats he wants. I'm pretty sure you can have all the instruments you want. Okay. <laughs> you hear that? That's your theremin somewhere in the cartoon bag. All right. Look, my point is. Wait, what hat goes with a theremin? I put on a little alien hat. Fedora. Like those little, oh, little nice, like, googly nice. eyes. Okay. There are <laughs> no hats eyes. in Star Trek, so I don't know. 
Look, my point is this. Don't just get down there and think you're going to do a couple of push-ups and challenge Asmodeus to a boxing match for your ticket home, right? If you want to do that, do yourselves a favor and just jump in the river. I promise it's going to be a lot less painful, okay? Sure. Hey, Carl, have you have you dealt with Asmodeus directly? Have you, like, talked to him, got wishes from him, anything like that? Well, look at this. We're here. Look at that. <laughs> well, this is goodbye. What? Look, uh, and your your um, tubes pull up to this beautiful white sandy beach that's leading inward towards a forest. And he says, look, I don't want to be overdramatic, but I've brought my fair share of people down through the layers and almost nobody leaves Menoris. All right. You want to know why? Because it's awesome. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but there's a bit of a theme to the layers. It, it kind of keeps the punishments organized and... Menoris is for those who have committed the sin of sloth. And I don't know if you guys know this, but sloth doesn't actually hurt anybody. So I think the powers of B have kind of cushed up the place compared with what's above and definitely compared with what's below. Most people just stick around. So look, I just want to say, if you guys head to the middle of the forest, you get the key. That's awesome. But if this is the last time I see you, have a nice life. And hey. Enjoy it. And with that, his inner tube detaches or he lets go of a chum's ankle, I guess. And he <laughs> gently floats away. Hey, guys, do you think he's Asmodeus in disguise? Ooh, do you think we're going to have to fight sick. Carl at the end of this? Better hope not. Pick <laughs> <laughs> your ass. I still think of Asmodeus as Eli, so it would make sense for sure. just, Carl to be like Eli's familiar. Doing, just doing one of the two voices he can do, <laughs> but he's only got two. <laughs> he's just got to introduce you to his friend Floon Poff, who's <laughs> <laughs> so he's got the next cover. You step onto the silky sand of the beach of Menoris, and it is perfect. What level of hell is Menoris, by the way? What number? This is the third layer of hell. <laughs> third going downwards to nine. Yes. Mm -hmm. Purgatoni D's was one or like 0. 0.5. Sort That's of. what it was called. Purgatoni D's. Purgatoni D's is uh, two and a half. 2.5. Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay. Purgatory is between two and three. Between two and three. Got it. Yeah. At least in this case. And I'm going to say probably between like four and five or five and yeah, six. Yeah, quite well. possibly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> you step onto the silky sand of the beach of Menoris and it is perfect. You never thought that heat would be a pleasant feeling again, but it is warm here the way the beach felt when you were a kid. It's that bright and perfect kind of day that makes you feel like you wore exactly the right outfit. And while there is moisture in the air, it's good moisture. The kind that lets you know it rained this morning before you woke up, but that the park benches are already dry. And as you walk further in along a wide and shady path, you see that this forest grows with <laughs> plentiful and giant fruit trees. We're getting such a fun window into Eli's version of happiness. That rained <laughs> earlier, and now the benches <laughs> That's are dry. nice. Is that is not nice, the best? Happy no, it is, that is, is quite the nice. best. It's the best. It Thank you. It sounds really great. Yeah. yeah. But in hell, but nice. But nice, yeah. You sound like someone who hasn't been ha have to be outside with a toddler running around the place. I do and sound like that. you need a nice dry I do sound like that. Like that. It sounds like that all the time. <laughs> <It's just rules. laughs> Pear trees and trees hung with red juicy apples. The good flavors, none of the shitty ones. There are blueberry bushes hung with heavy, ripe fruit, and everywhere nestled under cozy bushes and with their backs up against sturdy trunks are people. People and devils alike, eating, napping, gazing up through the canopy above them to the beautiful sky, and having what appears to be a pretty awesome time. As you're passing through this first little entrance, a drow with gorgeous onyx black skin waves at you and says, Hey guys, welcome to the forest of Menorahs. Uh, Oh my God, that rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> it's college. Sick. So like, what's up, guys? Uh, what's your hurry? I want to know what uh, Morgan, the sound engineer's college experience was like, because this does not <laughs> sound like college to me. <laughs> college for men, Anna. Stop bumming everyone Okay, out. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, cool. State school in the South. <laughs> this is exactly that. This is exactly what it was like. Yeah. 
No, I mean, you guys should hang out for a little while. These pears are good and they're soft, but they're like, don't get all over your face levels of soft. You've got to try <laughs> one of these. I'm going to try one right, of those. That does sound really good. I won't Yeah, the too. pears are delicious. They're perfect. You've never had a better pear. I'm also going to grab one of those apples that looked so good earlier too. Excellent. Excellent. They're exactly the right amount of crunchy and sweet. Like you always like, oh, right. This is how an apple should taste when you have one of these apples. But it's not too sour. It's not too sour. There are green ones across the hall. Those ones are nice and sour. But these ones, these are the red sweet ones. I would like to set a trap for a mouse. <laughs> Ooh, will you describe the mangoes to me? I can't. It's too erotic. Gross. The mouse or the mangoes? Both. I mean, <laughs> we've canonically established how erotic the mouse is. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, is Bartholomew now on this is level? Is Bartholomew here right I don't now? Know. You have to look around. He's everywhere. You have to check a out. Perception check. Yeah, make a little perception check for me. Can I have a black Sharpie? No. Dang Five, it. Five. Ten. Ten. You don't see him. But you do feel a slap across your face and ah, it's gone. Fuck that guy. Can I set a trap? I love it. Hermandas plus rules. I would like to cast snare. Great. Cast snare randomly. Gonna. A guy walking by gets caught in it. Oh, God, what happened? <laughs> God damn it. I was it. having Never such mind. a lovely afterlife that I got caught in this snare. Why would someone set a random snare here? Oh, please help me. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're going to ignore him. Yeah. I guess I'm I'll gonna, fade I, to I'm silence gonna now. <laughs> We're going to keep walking away. Okay. <laughs> like try to act like we had nothing to do with that. Yeah. I'll, I'll be back if there's a three beat. Just be aware. They'll turn it into a fucking hammock. <laughs> I'm going to go over and just like lick a blueberry, but then just not eat it. All right. I don't know Cat behavior. what the outside of a delicious blueberry tastes like, but it's fine. It's, I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> she'll, I she's going to try to bury it. You know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm going to try to bury it. Can I do an investigation check on some of the fruit? Yeah, absolutely. 21. Uh, 21. Okay, so with a 21, I will tell you that the fruit is perfect in every way. It seems to be totally flawless. And I will also give you this. I will say that with a 21, there is something magical about this fruit. Oh, I'll say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's so juicy, but it's not all over your face. That's right. It's the best. <laughs> right? Except when you want it to be all over exactly. your face, right? Like yeah. you said, there's some of it that, yeah. Are we in a good place? <laughs> Let's check for Froyo puns, probably on <laughs> the buildings and stuff. Mm. That was a good puppet show, fantasy puppet show. I enjoyed it. I'm going <laughs> to. What? Nope, I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, no, we're just going to chill here. This seems nice. All no, right. no. You guys are just chilling. I can't eat anything here. I'm a carnivore. I would like to see if any of these people are like doing anything besides just hanging out. Like they, they, there's no, there's no, nothing going on. Nope. At all. Not, not a single person in this forest that you can see is doing anything. Anything. We're in like the land of sloth is what you said, right? But yeah, they're they're not even talking to each other. They're literally just sort of like staring up through the trees. I am going to perform my immortal in the quad and try and <laughs> charm people into giving us information. Sure. You're literally talking to someone right now. I would now like to, I would like to ask someone. Yeah, I was, I was going to ask, what is a drow? Did you call it a drow? A drow. Yeah, they're uh, dark elves. Type of elf. Dark elves? Type of dark elf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, under a... Uh, yeah, originally they were written as like evil elves because they were dark skinned, and now they're just dark skinned elves. Be cool. Okay, <laughs> they're from the Underdark. Yeah, they are. It's cool. In hell. Yeah. I have a question. Yeah, absolutely. So, who runs this place? I hear he's at the center of the forest. Have you ever been over there? Oh yeah, my moon. That dude is so chill. Mm. He's in his like castle, but it's more of like a, a casa. And it's in the center of the forest. But unfortunately, mm -hmm. the mm. door is locked. Uh, oh. I guess people keep harshing his vibe by visiting. So he keeps things super chill by locking the doors and giving a key to each of the tribes of Menoris. Oh, there's tribes. Yeah. 
You guys don't know about the tribes? No. Mm, how many We're are there? Here. Ah, you guys are so new. Okay, so obviously it rules here and you're never going to get bored like me. But some people do, and they sort of formed into these four, like, harsh vibe tribes. There's the Enclave of Excellence on the north side of town. To the east is the Pit of Despair, but my advice, stay away from those guys. They are bummers. To the west is the Resignation, and back at the beach are the Stargazers. Each one of those groups has a key to the castle, but honestly, dudes, do not even bother because it's going to be like a whole thing. And you can just sit here with me and have pears. Okay, so I think Damien would love to go to the emo people, whoever mm, those are. Yeah, for sure. Which, uh, which tribe are you in? So I'm not in any tribe, right? Let me be very clear that the tribes are just for people who want to leave. Yeah, you're, you're not fond of labels. I get it. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I feel like we should be at the excellence one, don't you guys? Because, <laughs> because of our excellence. What were they again? There was a northeast, southwest, right? Yeah. Northeast, southwest, enclave of excellence. East is pit of despair. Pit of despair, resignation, and the yep, stargazers. The resignation <laughs> and the stargazers are back behind you on the beach. Okay. Feels like a stargazers thing. Beach right here. Well, they have a non intimidating title. We can try and do a check and see if we can glean any more information before we decide. Sure. Um, what are they? So you, you said they're, they're, they're not great. How so? In, in different ways or? I'm so glad you asked the little cat, dude. So here's the thing. It rules here, right? Obviously. And all of us, well, most of us are super happy to just chill. Like forever or whatever. Am I little? But some people are like, oh no, I want to leave. And they kind of fall into four groups and those make up the four tribes. So basically mm. the four tribes are all the people who've tried to leave and then sort of ended up grouped according to how it didn't work out. I guess the ones, if you guys, well, what do you guys care about? Do you guys want to get out or do you want to sit here and have some pairs? Because I have offered the pairs Dos times now. That's Spaniel, by the way. I took a little <laughs> bit of Spaniel in high school, but what I've been doing a lot of is this app and you like touch it and it's then you know Spanish. It's good. Duo, something or other. That's it. I don't know that we could say their name. That's so, why I said something or other. Something. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like we can say whatever the fuck we want. We <laughs> can say whatever we want. Duolingo teaches you to rape kids. That's right. What? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone who works at Duolingo has committed the crime of fraud. <laughs> wow. It's hell, so it's Duolimbo. <laughs> Duolimbo Duo is great. Oh, Duo damn Limbo. it. Can I do an insight? <laughs> well, who has really good insight? Uh, okay, insight. I have plus one. good insight. <laughs> so. I have plus three. Does anybody have more than plus three? No, but I'm doing it right now anyway. I was going to say, can we kind of check if he's like, you know, if he's actually... Three. You know, speaking from the heart, if he really believes what he's saying or if he's kind of like Achoom, maybe afraid. With that three, this mm -hmm. motherfucker is lying to you. I'm going to curse him right now. <laughs> and I got a 12. Yeah, he seems straight honest. Seems pretty honest. Okay. Okay. I got a 13. I'd like you to add a small amount of information, please. <laughs> also seems pretty add honest. A 20th. <laughs> <laughs> One 20th. Um, I... more. Two 40ths, if you well, want. One, you. Both more. Hmm. No, because be because he's a liar got, and a right? whore, I would like to um <laughs> it would be one twelve. Create an yeah. instant instantaneous <laughs> harmless sensory effect such as a shower of sparks, a puff of wind, faint musical notes, or an uh, an odd odor. I would like to make it smell as though he just farted. Oh, your cat just farted. That is really <laughs> gross, dude. Oh, your that cat really farted. Right, no, I am it. aware of the activity of my rectum cat. You cannot <laughs> doubt right, it. I'm going to shit his pants then. You can't shit my pants. I'm not wearing any. <laughs> I'm going to hang out and have pairs. He's got me there. All right. Okay. Why don't we go to the do good Keith, I really want to know this 112, but we'll talk about it later. <laughs> okay, so like, for, to get from 12 to 13, you need 13 twelfths of 12 or one yeah. and one twelfth. Yeah. What? Nope. I don't get it. No. It's, well, it's pretty. I'm it's, sure you're right. I just don't get it. <laughs> what did I miss? You'd get one twentieth more than my 12 twentieths, oh, okay. right? Yeah, sure. You'd get one twentieth more. Well, no, insight. if we're great, yeah, but, but, he, but you get one twelfth more than your 12. 
compared to your thing, mine is 13 twelfths of it. If I'm go, if I have 13 and you have 12. Yeah. Okay. Or one and one twelfth. So adding one twelfth. Yeah, one twentieth of the potential. Excuse me, annoying human uh, who, who not needs a human. Pairs. I'm a drow. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. Sorry, <laughs> annoying. That at the uh, beginning. <laughs> Big it. You all have two legs that you just go walkie 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 on. Whatever. <laughs> <And> drow <Okay. laughs> erasure. <laughs> all right, humanoid. I would like to ask you some questions. I'm all I'm all ears, little cat. Okay. If you promise not to fart Why, again. Why? How can listen? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Are there buildings? <laughs> no. There's... I thought you were going to be like, hold on, with this 20 versus 12, 13 thing. <laughs> because you can get more than 20, so it's not exactly out of 20 all the time. I don't know, it's oh fine. my God, this is fine. so boring. Okay. <laughs> Send your incorrect mathematical corrections to heathenray at gmail.com. Oh God, I hope that's cut. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this how, comedy could someone, how could someone... Uh, fail to leave here in a way in which they are stargazers? Well, I mean, I guess you'd kind of have to talk to them about it, but I guess if I was to like try to sum them up, mm. for people who aren't happy here, they're usually sticking around for a couple of reasons, right? Enclave of Excellence, they kind of want to make the perfect plan. And so they've been putting together the perfect plan for, I don't know, since I got here. The stargazers, I don't think they're planners so much as they're like dreamers, you know, mm -hmm. trying to figure out sort of what it is they want from their next They're steps. waiting for the great Gaia to let them they're know it's time. To say the yeah, next, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you get it. And then uh, the pit of despair folks, well, they're just kind of bummed, you know? I don't even really know why Mamoon gave them a key because they're just... Do they not know about the pears? <laughs> no, they do know about the pears. That's the crazy <sighs> thing. I don't know what they're so bummed about. I'd love if this circle of hell wasn't a perfect metaphor for American politics. I don't know if you did that on purpose, <laughs> but it's really depressing. <laughs> Thank you for my perfect metaphor. Thank you. And then the resignation, they're convinced that nothing they do ever matters. So they just sort of hang out and don't really even attempt to get out. Mm. How's that okay. different to the pit of despair? Pit of despair, they're sad about it. Resignation is resigned. <laughs> <laughs> they don't even think about trying to escape. Yeah, yeah. Not, they don't even care. No, that makes sense. Princess Bride. One guy. I, I caught that, Heath. I yeah, yeah, one thank, guy. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, one guy. I appreciate it. Well, thank you very much for all that information. I'm going to put up my hand. High five. High five. And uh, when he touches me, I'm going to shock and grasp him. Ooh, are you sure? Uh, no, I'm just going to, I'm just going to curse. I curse you. Just like that. I curse okay. you. Just a little shock. Like a zzz. You are actually attacking this person. No, I'm not. I'm just shocking him. I'm just like shocking static. him. Like a like, hand like, buzzer. Like a hand She's buzzer. A cat. She got static. If you're if you're gonna attack this NPC, I will let you attack this NPC. No, I'm not. I will not just remind you. I'm, I will remind I'm not gonna you do that. That in dis, you broke a window and there were cops. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna do that. All right. All right. Okay, and that in case you know even better, even better. I'm going to, um, you make a color, a small mark, or a symbol appear on an object or a surface for one hour. I'm going to, when I slap his paw, it says, uh, a tomb was here on his hand. You're going to make a dick on his forehead? Dick on the forehead <laughs> yeah, was what I was thinking too. Okay, dick on the forehead. All right, he can't see it, but he gives All you right, a high yeah. five and he's like, you know what, cat? You're pretty cool. I'm sorry mm. that I made fun of you for farting. It's a natural <laughs> thing to do when you eat delicious pears. I don't need pears. All right, let's uh, let's go and talk to one of the groups. It seems like the ones that don't care about anything will probably give us the, the key. All right, but I just had an apple and three pears. Can we stop by a bathroom on the way? <laughs> <laughs> what is Drow Guy's name? Oh, uh, yeah. My name is Jash, named for patron Jash. <laughs> Thank you, Jash. I consider myself kind of the welcoming party of Minoris, but, you know, without all the aggro vibes of a normal welcome party... Cool. Mm. Yeah, it's like you just sensed that somebody asked your name. That was good stuff. So have you interacted? I know you're not part of one of the tribes, but have you like interacted with uh, each of them a lot? Or? Oh, yeah. Like, do you have a favorite? Oh, do I have a favorite? Let me see. Um, I guess the Enclave of Excellence is pretty cool because those dudes, you could just watch them all day, man. They're just like flipping and cutting wood and building fences and 
just really going for it, you know? Like you admire their tenacity. It's also good to nap while they do their thing. You could just sort of watch them. Which one's the closest to here? Well, so here's the thing. I'm glad you ask. Uh, everything's equidistant in Menaris. Oh. <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. That's physically impossible. Like geographical oddity. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> but it's also true. Oh, brother, where art thou? <laughs> Thank you. It's <laughs> also. <laughs> everything is equidistant to everything else. And mm. it only takes a short walk that doesn't make you tired to get anywhere. Oh, I love that. No matter where you're going. All right, let's just pick one. Yeah. Let's, you know, why don't we just walk and see what we come up with? It's those stargazers, they're right there. They're like back on the beach. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We'll go. Let's go look at the stargazers. Let's go gaze at the stargazers. everybody just jumping in once again to thank you so much for listening to the show we have so much fun making this show i know i say it every week but we have so much fun making it and we can't believe how lucky we are that all of you enjoy listening to us goof around and play this very silly board game and hey if you're enjoying it why not head over to patreon.com forward slash d and d minus where for as little as a dollar you get a commercial free version of the show you'll never have to hear this middle part again you'll never hear me say we love doing as much as you love listening to it i don't know if you like that or don't like it but if you hate it you can make it go away with money but you also get access to our bonus episodes as well as a brand new Dungeon Masters Corner that just went up. I talk about AI and collectivism. There's all sorts of fun stuff waiting for you there over at patreon.com forward slash DND minus. And hey, if you don't have any money, that's okay. Why not give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcast? You know you've been meaning to. You've said to yourself, oh yeah, I got to get on there. I got to say a nice thing about them on the podcast. Take a moment do it. It really helps the show, puts us up in the leaderboards and helps new people find the shows. It's good for everybody and it's free. It's free. Doesn't cost you any money. Speaking of things that don't cost you any money, let's get back to the show. Thanks for listening. So back on the beach, before you know it, you see the towers of the stargazers dotted in a circle around a large communal fire pit. Around the fire pit sit and lie the stargazers. I know these people <laughs> intimately. Oh, God, are they doing a drum circle? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Actually, they're it. not. They're just kind of sitting around. They're not doing a drum circle. Oh, nice. But at least you assume they're the stargazers because they're all just kind of lying on their backs looking at the stars. Can I start a drum circle? You can try. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we in hell? How are they seeing stars? Aren't we in like... <laughs> underground? Mm. That's a great question. Mm. <laughs> As you approach, a young gnome woman is the first to notice you and she giggles and says, wow, man, that constellation like totally looks like a dog, man. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm Brit, named for patron Brit. Thank you, Brit. What brings you guys to the, to the enclave of the stargazers? Well, we were going from left to right. And we're uh, here for the drum circle. Uh, do you guys do drum circles? Nah, no one plays music around here, man. It's way too <laughs> aggro. It's way too aggro. Yeah. Do you have a key? Oh, yeah. You guys are getting out of this place, huh? Good for you. I'm getting out of here someplace, too. I think I'm going to start a bookstore, but it's not just any bookstore. Is it's it going to be it? called, yeah, it's going to be called Oof. Give and Take, where you get a free book. If you give a free a book. book. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I think that's called a library. Poor Brit the patron. <laughs> Question. This this key would be to open the castle to talk to him, to, to Mamoon, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's a key. One of the four keys to Mamoon's castle. That's right. Yeah, we, we want to talk to him. Nice. Good for yeah. you. Yeah. Can we have it? Oh, um, yeah. I just, um. Oh, man, I don't remember where we put it. Ooh. Hey, hey, Kellogg, do you remember <laughs> where we put the key to the flower shed? <laughs> no, no, to the castle. These guys want to go see my moon. Which castle? 
Jesus my Christ. moon's castle. I said they want to go see my moon. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> but like, <laughs> we should go there someday and throw a giant sleepover. Oh my God, we totally should. Like a lock-in with the other tribes. <laughs> yes! Okay. So good. I perceived an 18. Can I perceive the end of their conversation with the information that we need? It's never ending. It, they just <laughs> constantly <laughs> yammer back and forth about that they've completely lost track of you. <laughs> They're now talking about someone's birthday in three months. <sighs> oh, but this is wild. There's towers, right? Yep, there's towers all around you. Uh, how many, or is it just like innumerable? Six. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do an insight check on whether that six was just made I mean, up in that second? Yeah, order? six is definitely me. <laughs> just, uh, I didn't. It's six. Are you it's, lying? Uh, I thought you <laughs> perceived God's lie just now. Oh, with a two, that uh, it's actually four. You missed two of them. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> you missed two of those towers. That's not an how intimidation checks. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to try and intimidate the person? No, I want to intimidate you. Oh, but. me into saying six with a firmer tone of voice. Six. Do I get anything for a perception of 18 just now? No, they're just lying nothing. around. There's nothing okay. to perceive. Nothing they're to just perceive. fucking sitting there. You guys know where I can get a metal detector around here? <laughs> I'm feeling pretty strongly that we could definitely just look around, beat up whoever we want here, right? Yeah, or but, it's going to turn into like a, you know, they're actually crazy. Oh powerful. God, they're going to be like karate hippies. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And I doubt we could like perceive. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to do Aikido, but it's going to work. Who's got new for stuff some right now? Hey, oh God, wait, it really is wait hell. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Coat of many pockets. Ooh. I, wait, wait, wait. Are you talking to me? I have a robe that yes. has like a pocket scenario of some sort. Yes. Yep. Yeah, Can dude. you go pocket. reach into your pocket and pull out that key? I'm yeah. All do, right. So I'm going to I'm going to do that. Hold on. Read the description Jeez, of your why item. Are we saying this out loud. <laughs> read the, read the description of your item. Right. Heavy soft plaid bathrobe that has an ever shifting number and size of pockets. The contents of the pockets change and shift location hourly. Pocket contents magically appear plucked from the pockets of beings within 30 feet of the robe at any given time and disappear into the pockets within 30 feet as randomly as they appear. If a creature within 30 feet has neither pockets nor bags, their belongings are not affected. Okay, did we did we perceive any pockets or bags just now on this person? They're kind of wearing a variety of outfits. I would say that some of these stargazers probably have a pocket or two. Okay. I'm singing You Gotta Pick a Pocket or Two Boys in my mm -hmm. head right now. Yeah. Just so everybody knows. I won't do it mm -hmm, out loud because mm -hmm. I'm not good at singing. Wait, wait. Hot pocket. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> oh my God. If you reach in your pocket and it's hot, what are you going to do? Pull his hand out probably. Well, it's, it's hell, so it won't be. It won't be a hot pocket. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have hot pockets so now. No, it'll be a it'll be a shitty off brand hot pocket. Okay. Yeah, exactly. It'll, <laughs> it'll be a still frozen hot pocket. It'll be a lean pocket. Oh, oh, the worst. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I'm going to put on my robe, first of all. Sure. You weren't wearing your bathrobe? I, I, was I wearing it? Everyone sort of nods approvingly when you put on a bathrobe. Nice. Because this is the spot for that. You guys like this robe, right? I feel like everybody nodded. This is a pretty sweet robe, right? This is relaxed. It's totally sweet robe, dude. Thank I you, love it. background guy. Thank you. I see you over there. Hey, Eli, is this is the key either good or evil? Because I can detect that. Ooh. Is it an evil key? Um, no, it's not a good or evil key. <laughs> it's just a key. <laughs> it's a piece of metal, so I don't think it's... I uh... feel like it could be evil metal. Ooh, I have true strike. That would require attacking You're going to punch though. the key in the face? No, I... No. You point a finger at a target in range. Your magic grants you a brief insight into the target's defenses. Yeah. Or where they've hidden all their keys. It says right here. <laughs> Are you going to point at this hippie girl? You point at this. I'll give you this one for free. You point at this hippie girl and there's none. She's lying She has there. no defenses. 
<laughs> having a boring conversation with a guy that's not far enough away for her to be shouting as loud as she is. <laughs> ah, damn it. How okay. big is this, like, you know, how big is the Stargazers area? We're talking like an acre or are we talking like a football field? Um, Think of it as like a small neighborhood cul-de-sac. Small? Okay. Does that include the houses? A neighborhood? Uh, yeah. That includes the houses. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Six towers. Yeah. Okay. So a lot, of people, a lot of people were within 30 feet. I feel like I do the robe thing. Yeah. Here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to have you roll a D100. If you get 100, you'll pull the key out of your pocket. Anything else, I'm going to zig on this sack. You got to get a pocket in my table pocket. soon. Okay. Yeah. You got to get a pocket before. Higher you, you roll, the better the thing you pull out will be. Higher Ooh. is better. Higher is better. Okay. So if it's a 20, it might actually be the key. Okay. That's an 83. That's an Ooh. 83. You pull out a really delicious pear. A hot pot. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear Jazz from far away go, Oh, man, I'm saving that one for later. Oh, no. <laughs> this is second only to when that cat farted on me. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he here? No, he's far away. Yeah, he's oh. far away. First of all, he's equidistant. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you a pocket table, Eli. Thank you. All right. So I've looked over all my actions and stuff. I don't see anything that's going to help us find a key. <sighs> yeah. I was thinking maybe I could. If, how tall are these towers? Eight stories. Oh, they're like buildings? Yeah. Let's just they're go astrology in the towers. And, towers. Yeah, Astronomy let's, towers. Let's go in and look. Same thing. See what we can learn. <laughs> is, the, is one of them taller than the others? No. No. Oh. I can fly. Should I just. Should I just fly up and see if I can see anything on top of them? I mean, everywhere's equidistant, so like... Oh, you can fly? Yeah, I got the spell fly in the last level up. I feel like we could probably just like walk up these, right? Yeah. Well, and, and the top will be equidistant from the bottom, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Flying sure. would not be <laughs> to your advantage. That's true, but it would be cool. Yeah, I know it would be. Do you want to fly up to one of them and we'll walk to a different one each? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I was going to say, everything is equidistance. Why don't we just walk everywhere all at once and look at yeah. look for the key? And then just have the key. Yeah, for sure. Mm. We'd like to roll for walking everywhere. I like this idea. Yeah, oh, you okay. guys just walk yeah. around. Yeah, you walk and walk, but um, you do not see the key just like lying on the ground or anything. We go up one of the towers. Um, Is Bartholomew the mouse around here? I want to ask him some questions. Make a perception check. You're going to get slapped in the face. You know what happens here. Listen, listen. Bartholomew. Nowhere. Not nope. even close. Slapped in the face. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> Fucking, I, just, I just wanted to ask you to see if you'd seen anything. You seem to know a lot of things and be around a lot of places. Too late. He slapped you. Now he's gone. <sighs> he, has, he has one bit. That joke. <laughs> ah, damn it. <laughs> that mouse. <laughs> Are there any other mice? No. Let's try going up a tower. Sure. Yeah, let's go to the tower. I'd like to go into one of the towers. So you go up the nearest tower, and at the top, you find another one of the stargazers. This is a young dwarf who barely has his beard, and he is looking through a sort of a eh, not quite well put together telescope and sort of jotting down like uh, what would appear to be astrology notes. It's definitely not astronomy. It's astrology. Mm. And he's sort of like pondering it and thinking about it. And he's like, oh, hey, welcome. Do you guys need the telescope? I, I've kind of been hogging it up here. So uh, it's a telescope for astrology. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you want to look? No. Oh, right. Uh, do, you, do you have a, a key? Is there a key around here? Can I do an investigation check on what he was writing? Yeah, it's, it's just like astrology symbol. It's just I, crap. Yeah, he's not trying to hide it from you. It's just like weird, like nah, the Venus is in the retrograde Third of Mercury, quarter, but it's not accurate. Yeah. This has a very King's Quest vibe to it, doesn't it? This whole adventure. Wait, a what quest vibe? A King's Quest vibe. I don't know King's like Quest. The old What's point and <gasps> okay, never mind. What it, wait, what's King's Quest? King's Quest point and click adventures back in the day. Oh, the old like computer game? Yeah. I think I did play yeah. one of those. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so I, I, I feel like it was King's Quest that like I, I tried to kill a priest and it was like, you can't play then. And it made me <laughs> Really? <not play. laughs> I can't remember if it was King's Quest or Life Here in Georgia. It was something. Or My Life. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> My lived experience is no illusions. I mean, just cut this. Just, just, just like say no reason, but maybe just cut. <laughs> you were going to tell us something, Eli? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's just like uh, random astrology scrawls. No, but you said, but I will tell you this. Oh, but I will tell you this. Just looking through the open window, his stuff is not accurate, right? Like when he's saying okay. the Venus is in the red. First of all, he, there's no planets that are visible from this plane and it's daytime. So it's nonsense. <laughs> so what was your name again? I missed it. Look what? Oh, yeah. My name is... <laughs> <laughs> You just sick. quickly going over to Patreon. Yeah, with my two name A's. is Pat Realm. Michael. Michael. <laughs> Michael. Pat. Named for patron Michael Terrell. Thank you, Michael. Oh, are we saying last names now? Eli? Yeah, I think that's fine. I think there's enough out there that we can trust. This. Okay, is so uh, Michael, <laughs> what uh, what's your sign, by the way? Uh, I'm a Quanabernis fan. Get the fuck out of here, so am I. That's so cool. Can you give us a key? <laughs> uh, what kind of key? Uh, how, do you, uh, all the keys you have? I don't know. Okay, yeah. He empties out his pockets, <laughs> and you just like see like three metal keys. He's like, okay, so that one. Don't tell the guys downstairs, but that one's to the flower shed. Grab it. <laughs> this one right here. This is to my little cupboard behind me. It's where I keep all my really good telescopes so nobody can get them. Mm -hmm. And then this key, I don't know what it's to, but I think it might be to the flower shed. Wait, take two, three. You said two the first one keys was to the flower, flower shed. shed. Don't, don't question him. We'll just take yeah. all three and deal I'll, with I'll, it later. Sure, there you go. You, right. I'll trade you this pair for uh, your keys. Oh, uh, no need, man. You can just have them. It's no big deal. Okay, do you not want it to pair? Nah, I'm kidding. Right. Can I look through the telescope and maybe like discern why all of his stuff was wrong? Like, is it like he's, you know, it, it, whether or not he's looking through the telescope and the telescope is messed up in some way or yeah. if he's just an idiot? You look through the telescope, it it's, appears to be a fine working telescope. I mean, it's cobbled together, right? They don't have like a ton of telescope mm -hmm. industry down here. So pr someone probably had it with them when they came down to hell and it's been repurposed. But you see no reason why Galileo. he would be making <laughs> mistakes, right? Because you can see a clear blue sky. Okay, so like he's just marking things down incorrectly? Yeah, apparently. Can I do an insight check on whether he's doing that on purpose or not? Yeah, go ahead. Roll that insight check for me. 19. Nice. 19. Okay, here's what I will give you with a 19. With a 19, these people, as you've walked among them, as chill as they've seemed, aren't well, right? So what they are doing around you, the way they're behaving, it's not natural. It's a coping mechanism for something. But what it's a coping mechanism for, you don't know. But what you will get with a 19 is that everyone who's acting super chill right now is kind of faking it. Do you mean like sickly or do you mean like afraid when you say not well? I would say not as relaxed as they pretend to be. Okay. 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 And so you're not talking about like they're delusional. They're actively acting to some extent is what you mean. Yeah, they're aware. No, I think, I think, I don't know with a 19, I would say whether or not you could tell they're delusional. But some of them are definitely drinking this juice. Okay. But the guy in the quad, the drow, he was not. He was not unrelaxed at all. He was completely relaxed. He was totally relaxed, yeah. He was totally relaxed. He was okay. just having a great time. Hmm. Can I do a persuasion check on this dwarf? Yeah. I'm going to think about what I want to persuade him to tell us, though. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hard for me to set that uh, that yeah. dice level. I'd like to persuade him to do a <laughs> random thing. <laughs> to give me beneficial Have him for the roll adventure. on a T100 <laughs> table and then he has he's what I Falcon. mean. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm wondering if I should ask him why he's a little bit afraid or if I should more ask him like why, you know, they have come here instead of the middle. What do you guys think? Can I ask him something? Yeah, but I, I probably have a higher persuasion check. Sure, you, right? you probably do. So why why did you guys decide to become the stargazers? Oh. Um Okay. Well, I could tell you, but it's um it's a little bit of a 
bummer. I feel like we have all the time in the world right now. You have all so, the time in the world to yeah. be bummed out. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. So you've noticed around here that it's um, it's nice, right? It's fine. Good pairs. Yeah. I'm a carnivore. Yeah, it's free so. food. Mm. But I don't know if anyone's mentioned it, but the the food has life extension powers. So uh, that means that the natural lifespan for a human in Menoris is several thousand years. And so for a dwarf like me, I mean, 10,000, 20,000 years. And it's, it's dope for a few years. It's, it's maybe even for a few decades, uh, if you're lucky. But then um, you get bored because nobody does anything <laughs> here. It is the good place. It's the bad good place. <laughs> there's, uh, there's no books or mm. poetry or music. And you don't want to write in the... There's no really good conversation besides like, have you tried the fruit or have you tried napping under that tree? Um, sure. And you're, and the stargazing is supposed to help with that? What's what's going on there? Yeah, so I guess everyone copes in their own way. And I guess I would say that the way that I have coped, if I were to have a moment of like brutal clarity, <laughs> is by continually coming up with a series of perfect fantasies about mm. what will happen and what my life will be like mm. that keep me in a state of stasis, which a lot of people would call madness mm. uh, for <laughs> eternity. Yeah, I mean, most people, when they go mad, just run into the river. But, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's like the boss man says, it's the, it's the hell we deserve, right? Who's the boss man? Is that what he says, Mamoon? You talk to him. Uh, no, no. It's just... Mm. Who's the boss man? Asmodeus, the big yeah, red okay. guy. Oh, that boss man. Okay, I'm sure the big WWE boss. WWE wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Actually, WWF. Vince McMahon, who we've recently big learned belongs man. down here. Top character. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you've talked to Mumoon before. You have a key. You've, you, I assume you, you've been there to talk to him. Oh, uh, um, I don't have the key. I don't know who has the key. But um, yeah. I have talked to Mamoon and he's super chill. And like the first time I was not having a chill time, I was like, oh, Mamoon, like, please let me be free from this prison. And he was like, chill out. And I did. (laughs) Can we see the garden shed from on top of the tower? You can. All right, let's go try to open it. Yeah, let's go open the garden shed. All right. We got two keys potentially that open the garden shed. Oh, I hope it's one of those you have to do it at the same time keys like a (laughs) nuclear sub. (laughs) So you open the garden shed and in amongst the completely unused gardening tools and bric-a-brac, you see a to-do list nailed to the wall, to the inside wall. And you can see all the items are scratched out. They're very simple things like lie on beach, gaze at stars, etc., And then it says on the bottom, and this has not been scratched out, it says, collect second key from the Enclave of Excellence. Cool. Mm. Well, we'll go do that. Yes. (laughs) That's a pretty specific thing at the bottom. I feel like we do that. that Perfect. I agree with with the emo guy. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Yeah, me too. It's Damien. I know know your name's Damien. I don't know why I described (laughs) you without your name. I prefer emo. I prefer emo. I still call you the dog. You love it here. Gravy's got the keys, right? Who? Yeah, Gravy I'm, does, yeah right? I'm holding the keys. You I got guess. the keys. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. I'd have to carry them in my little cat teeth. I wanted to carry. Yeah. I make sure not to put them in any of my weird magic pockets that make them randomly disappear. <laughs> Ooh, roll a dexterity check for me, baby. <laughs> I throw them on the ground. <laughs> no, you already said you put them in your pocket. No, I said I don't. No, I said you I said you sure put them in your pocket. Them in my no. He pockets. said very specifically. Dexterity check not. to see if it's you can not put it in record. your pocket. This you is your are aiming, power, You're aiming for Mr. the ground. Bosley. Let's see if you hit it. Let's see if you hit the <laughs> ground. <laughs> Accidentally throw it into That's your... That's a nat 20 plus one. Oh, face. you throw it on the ground so good. It's so good. It's right there on the <laughs> ground. There in front of you. I'm going to grab the keys so that we're not pocket. Do another dexterity. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. 
You travel north through the forest, noticing trees dotted with hammocks and comfortable napping spots as you do. From a distance, the workhouse of the Enclave of Excellence looks like it might be crawling with ants. But as you get closer, you realize that this place is anything but lazy. People are hard at work on every square inch of it. Taking readings from instruments, planting and repairing barricades, tuning up machines, their activities are as busy as they are numerous. But as you get close and each of the workers catch sight of you, they heave a tremendous sigh and without speaking to you, scuttle inside. Hmm. Mm, scuttle, 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 scuttle. Shall we go inside and talk to them there? Or should we do a little bit of like, per- I'm going to do a little perception check on what they've been doodling out Ditto. here. I'm going to do an investigation check on like what kind of structures. Oh, that's a seven. Uh, Fourteen. A chum, this is made out of pig skin. It's a building. <gasps> I'm going to eat it. <laughs> okay. Also a building. Oh. Wooden building. I got a 17 athletically. What do I know? Yeah. You could do a cartwheel at this building. I do a cartwheel. <laughs> I'm going to go eat a blueberry. I, I'm really excited about that. I can't do those in real life. Really? Cartwheel? No. You can't do a cartwheel? Because of the height? Because you're afraid? I'm afraid. Because you're yeah. a coward? I'm, I'm, yes, I, like, I'm sure physically it's maybe pot. No, nah, I'm not even sure now. I'm kind of old. but like I, try, I did one the other <laughs> day and I hurt something. How much money to do a cartwheel? Jesus. Um, I, not from me. Are you offering an amount from yourself? Not no? from me. I'm just saying third party right now walks in the room and is like, hey, Heath, try to do a cartwheel. What's the amount that you're like, absolutely. Ten grand. I just have to try? Yeah, you just have to try. You don't have to succeed. You just have to try. Uh, Achoom the Cat just rolled a 17 on doing a cartwheel. Okay. I'm yeah, you do an adorable little cartwheel. They have cash? Cash. <laughs> I'm I'm trying a cartwheel for like a dollar. I yeah, want to exactly. do a cartwheel. Yeah. 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 Too. It's, it, it's athletics as a cartwheel, right? Yeah. You could do any of them and be fine. You could do a nature cartwheel. Fucking 18. 18. Excellent oh, cartwheel. Ooh, cartwheel. 19 plus one. A beautiful cartwheel from Damien. Cartwheel. <laughs> Nice. Really For those of you who play Theater of the Mind as you listen to our podcasts, our heroes are now just cartwheeling around outside. <laughs> but it's lovely but here. You know, we're all yeah, playing. No, no it is. Shitting. It's this perfect time, grass for cartwheeling. Yeah. No shitting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Season two, no one shits themselves doing a cartwheel. <laughs> People say we haven't grown. Oh, since we've done a cartwheel, I am going to get up and do a perception check again and see how that goes. You already did a perception check. I know. And this one... <laughs> I was oh, now it's a one. Yeah. Achoom, it's on fire. It's on fire, oh, Achoom. No. Put it out. Oh, put no. it out. <laughs> is it just the one building? Or as you say, we, as we were walking down, it got, you know. No, it's just one big like workhouse. One big workhouse. Okay, like warehouse, like big open yeah. space. Mm-hmm. Can we go listen in? Yeah. See if we can hear what's going on inside. Absolutely. You listen at the door. I won't even make you roll for it. You hear the signs of like people talking and shouting and have that over here. And there's a 13 by 44. And it's like, oh, no, put that over there. People working hard behind the door. Is it locked? Only one way to find out. I'm a cat. Put on a hard hat. Oh, what a great idea. Yeah, I'll I'll put on I'll put on a little. I'm going to use my makeup kit to make me look like I've, you know, been working in a mine, I guess, is what I'm going to go with. problematic. Uh, why don't you not do that? Damien Black's up. Yeah. <laughs> no, like just smudges. Cool. To match the heart. Just a little black face. Not no, all I get the it. Way. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> like a like an orphan or someone in okay, a Okay, so Damien is pick in a pocket or two. Like yeah. Justin Justin Trudeau, not like Yeah, uh, da- Damien's in smudge <laughs> face. Achoom has a construction helmet on. Who's going who's going for the cop? <laughs> I'm a, like I am a cop in this, so yeah. And the I problematic guess Indian. Where, why do I, I am do I know any? Don't like... take that bait, Heath. Do not you do not put <laughs> gravy. You do not dress gravy like a Native American. You hear me? <laughs> uh, I'm gonna p- whip out my lute and I'm going to sing like a work song, like a assembly line type song. One of those. Mm. Do you want it to go into the uh, room? Uh, yeah, yeah. Like we're walking in, right? Oh, are you walking in? I think so. Are, Didn't all right. are you announcing in? our presence? Are you doing like old timey factory montage or are you doing like 
look for the union label like a like a union fight song. Definitely the first one, the like, you know, on the assembly line. Not the union one? Blow the man down, that type of stuff, right? Okay. Oh, a, a sea shanty? Well, not a sea shanty, <laughs> but like one. That, oh, like, God, we found Anna's level of pedantry. We found it, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the 13th, 12th, and which shanty are you singing exactly? <laughs> you, you're podcast. talking about like a, like a Quebecois factory, probably, right? <laughs> Zutalor. I only rolled the 16 performance for the song. Mademoiselle, please don't say, I love a strangle, I love a strangle. Mademoiselle, please don't say, I love a strangle, come on, say it. That's a dance. I wish I'd done this on purpose, but I can't say that. It's not even Christmas. That's so not a crit. <laughs> you open the door, it's all Christmas music. When you open the door, <laughs> you see a similar sight to what you saw inside. Dozens of workers measuring, planning, checking, and rechecking a variety of instruments and equipment. However, when you walk in the door, every bit of it stops, and the room lets out a tremendous, unified groan. One especially distressed looking gnome begins to tear the map he was working on to pieces and screams a little more shrilly than you'd like. Useless! Totally useless! Finally, a dwarf who was working at the head of a planning table heaves a heavy sigh and comes down to you. <sighs> Forgive my colleagues, travelers. It's nothing against you, but your very presence has thrown a wrench into decades of planning. Uh, perhaps centuries. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Relon Vickers, named for patron Devin Vickers. Thank you, Devin. Where are you from? Where are you from, man? I'm from Scotland, but I sound like a bee. And I am the leader <laughs> of the Enclave of Excellence. That's my note for there the voice, and that's what I'm doing with you. Yeah. Rough. We've got one bee. <laughs> and I am the leader of the Enclave of Excellence. <laughs> what you see before you is a finely tuned Ooh, machine. That's Irish. <laughs> no, I, if you don't interrupt me, it'll stay <laughs> purple bell oh. <laughs> There it is. I'm from the British Isles, all of them at once. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so finally, what you see before you is a finely tuned machine. Oh, yeah, that's definitely Irish. A yeah. machine with one goal and one goal only. <laughs> To escape this cursed place. Cool. Okay. And you just stopped escaping because we entered the room. Ah, yes. You see, unfortunately, our plan is so finely tuned that your presence here has thrown us off by one, maybe, I don't know, 200 years. And someone from the back goes, at least 300 years. Yeah, at least 300 years. It was like, like the Heisenberg thing. I don't think it's a very good <laughs> plan. Don't people have, show yeah. up here all the time? Yeah, and every time they do, because we need to have the perfect plan, we start over from scratch. Don't we, fellas and ladies and people who don't identify with either of those? And everyone's like, yeah, absolutely. I start over again. I never even bother starting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it sounds like it's not a very, it sounds like it's a, a not a very good plan if you're, um, you know. Not a very good plan. <laughs> Burling. Show them the plan. And Burling yells, A cat, I went crazy this morning. All right, fine. Um, Chris, Chris, show them the plan. And a devil, whose arms and legs are covered in post-it notes, reaches up above him and pulls down a flibbity-bibbity screen covered with even more plans, maps, and charts. This is the basic plan to escape Minaris. Step one, gather the four keys from the four tribes of Minaris. You'll notice mm. we're already 25% done with that one. Although we are technically 24.98% as we'll have to actually take the key out of the drawer where we keep it. And mm. please note that we have done the work to calculate that 24.98% is a maximum distance any of us have ever allowed us to be from the most efficient grabbing time. Now, we did carry the key with us for a few hundred years, but the loss of productivity from the missing hand was a grievous error in planning. Set us back, oh, what would you say? 17 years? At least 17 years! Yeah, at least 17 years. Anyways, once we've gathered the keys, each of which is broken down into its component plans, we'll unlock the gate to Mamoon's castle, assess the situation, and then we'll return back here, at which point we will form, once again, the perfect plan to do whatever needs to be done. But then don't worry. We will be prepared. Show him, Kip. And a small fish creature hands each of you a stack of papers and says, I've written the first volume of my 11-volume series, 
what my moon might do to stop us from leaving. And, and and I'm already into the second volume, so don't don't worry about the plan, uh, guys. It's going to be okay. perfect. It's going to be totally that. perfect in every way. I love that. All right. Um, oh, my God, I slipped into I slipped into Bridget because we're talking. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Here. Wait, 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 were you throwing it to me for a solo here? What are I-, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, uh, you you just seem super excited about going to like the the, the perfect place. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that, yeah. No. Okay. All right. Uh, where's where's the drawer? Just so we can stay away from it. Oh, it's right there. And you see that there is actually like a chest of drawers right in the center of the room that everyone sort of seems to be kind of like circling around as they do their work like if you were to guess and i won't make you roll for it this is like they have choreographed how they're allowed to walk around the room so that they're within perfect distance of grabbing this key at any given moment isn't everything well, you're, equidistant all the time you're right in this and that's what i thought <laughs> no all the four places are equidistant not all spaces within space are equidistant okay Ooh. but all the four places were equal <laughs> okay whatever it's not that anymore we're not doing that anymore is what you're saying yeah it's okay. not that anymore. Okay. Mm. <laughs> you know what would probably save you guys, I don't know, a couple hundred years, is if somebody else gathered all those keys up for you beforehand. Oh, the room stops. You, you would gather the rest of the keys? Yeah, like that's, right? Like we were going left to right, and that seemed like sort of the, you know, the next the right. thing. <laughs> Gordy? Gordy, how much time would that save us? And you see a pile of papers, just a little human bursts out of it. And he's like, 470, 570, 500, 233 years. Yes, it's excellent. Excellent. And then he dives back down into the papers. He said, I, I, I like that idea. If you gather the rest of the keys for us, you can have this one sure enough. Because we'll be right behind you, laddie. I promise you that. I am going to try and persuade him that we would be better we'd be better able to get the other three keys with this key first sure talk first and then i'll see how much we can have it though right you can have it if you you can he definitely implied that you can have it if you gather the other three keys yeah morgan would like to convince him to give him the key right now got it yeah Yeah. okay yeah Yeah. yeah, yeah. see if you got that persuasion yeah do it maybe sing him a song 28 that's gotta do it 28 all right yeah so to use words, say say what you say. <laughs> if we were to convince the other three, I think it would be easier to do so if we had your key first. Aye, aye, indeed it would. Everybody, Alpha One Zero Key Two, little red lad, now. And of course, the nearest person to the chest of drawers hurls it open, and as a key goes sailing through the air, you see a gnome catch it and toss it perfectly at your hand. Okay. Make a dexterity nice. saving throw. I'm really going to need one of the more athletic ones to I'm like... I need you to make a dexterity to, saving throw. I'm going to dive in the way. Yeah, exactly. I would also like dive to dive in the way. Everyone make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a 13. Nope. Nope. Uh, okay. Wait, dexterity saving throw? Oh, I actually have throw? good dexterity. I, 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 did, I, I, did. I critically failed. I critically cool. failed. <laughs> yep. I got I was, I was doing before you said that. Uh, yeah. I was doing the bodyguard thing and it went as badly as literally possible. All right. Now. So and Dam- I got a 19. Damien catches it. Gravy dives directly <laughs> into Vardos's <laughs> balls, who does a beautiful front flip as he does. Oh man. And Achum just does another cartwheel for no reason. <laughs> Really sorry My dexterity saving throw was 18. Really sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> but yes, you do. I'm Kevin You Goster. do have the key. I'm so confused, though, because I'm the least athletic that I have the key in my hand, but I <laughs> falter and I kind of... <laughs> All right. Now, if you'll excuse us, we've got to readjust our plan because now we have a 0.02% efficiency back. And I think we can all agree that's going to make a huge difference when we start over. Am I right, everybody? And everyone's like, yeah, absolutely. And they start rabble, 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 restarting, riffling, and they all get back to work again. Nice. Lovely. Can I do... We have the key, right? You have the key. Okay. Let's go outside. Let's go to the next. Fuck them. Yeah. I kind of want to, like, I kind of want to, like, do an investigation check on this key, see if it will, like, 
give us any more insight into like the next few keys, maybe? Does it look like the other key that we have? No, because we didn't get the other key. We got the garden shed. Oh, but it, no, we right, got we the might. Oh, we had one that they thought was the garden shed and didn't know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I will tell you, it doesn't look like the keys that you got from the stargazers. Okay. The key that you are holding in your hand is perfectly milled. This key has been shined and perfectly exacted. It seems like someone goes over it probably daily to polish it. This key is 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 a absolutely perfect key. It is the platonic key. All right, but if somebody polished it every day, that would actually like the key would Make actually not- get worse <laughs> yeah. over time if they did that. It's been polished smooth. I love that. <laughs> would it like shine in the darkness? Do we know that? Probably not. It's just so someone's okay. put a lot of time and effort into so it. So where okay. next? Hmm. Okay. I'm just thinking in my head, it's 0.02 away from like the, the moving the key from that little spot in the middle to like the right spot also in that room represents a pretty small amount. Like that's tiny. And then like whatever. Uh, so what? 5,000 times that tiny amount is like they're done. So that what? they don't have a lot to do. Right. Yeah, they should just be like sitting on their hands. No, they're they're coming up with a perfect plan. Yeah, well, like, they're recreating the plan right now from scratch yeah, because from you scratch, walked because in. Because we walked in based on, but also based on us having the key. Yeah, and them not having the key now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. They said they were twenty five percent of the way through the or twenty four point nine eight percent of the way through getting the keys. Is all they said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, on to the next. Yeah. Yeah, let's go to the resignation. Yeah. I'm going to give this key to Vardos. I think we should maybe start splitting keys up. All right. I don't think we can trust Gravy with one. I think we can. No. He's already got some. (laughs) All right. Did did my robe uh, activate again by any chance? No. It's uh, an hour. How long has it been? We like walked, uh, you know, through the forest. No, it's a short walk. Everything's a short walk. I, I lied. I am going to keep this key because I'm going to try and persuade the next person. Yeah, Damien, keep the keys. Yeah, Thanks. I'll keep this key. Damien, I'm going to take right. the robe off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Tie the sleeves around your waist. Yeah, just, yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like oh, grunge, like shoulders. Style. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. No, around the waist. Mm-hmm. I like that, yeah. Around the waist. Kurt yeah, Cobain. It's like yeah. flannel mm-hmm. bathrobe. Yeah, you got shoot yourself yeah. in the head. <laughs> what? Eli? Courtney Love. In the mouth. But. Get killed by Courtney Love. That's on the head. <laughs> no. That's in the head. She did it. She did do it. She Thank did it. you. She did not do it. You travel north through the forest. You travel north through the forest, noticing trees. (laughs) You travel north through the forest. You fucking travel north. You travel north the motherfucking north. north. Yeah, (laughs) cocksucker. (laughs) What? The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2024. All rights reserved.